Hey, Kevin. Need a nail? Yeah, that or I'm gonna get hammered, one or the other. Uh, question came in the other day from a very eagle-eyed viewer. They happened to see my anvil in the background and they saw all the hammers hanging off of it. And he said, why on earth do you have so many different hammers? Well, it really all depends on what you're gonna do with it. How you're gonna use the hammer, what kind of metal you wanna pound on with it, you know, what kind of shape are you looking for, what kind of job are you trying to get done with the darn thing. Take this little guy, little, little tiny head on it. Doesn't weigh all that much, you know, a great big long, kind of pick on the end of it. And that's what I was told this hammer is called, is a picking hammer. It's for working in little tiny areas, you know, for, uh, for blacksmithing. You know, this is where I got it. it, was from a blacksmith school that was closing up, they'd gone out of business, they'd retired. That's where my anvil came from, is from a blacksmith school that used to be right here in Phoenix, Arizona. And this was one of their hammers. And it was for shaping, it was for working in tiny areas. You know, I use it for getting down in the little holes, you know, working in little tiny spots where even this head is too big if you're gonna pound on something. You wanna get like a little den out. Well, you could take, you know, get a very long, get a very long grip on it. Don't choke it up here, you don't have any power. Hold it way back here. You can get a lot of force with it. It doesn't weigh much. It's not gonna tire your wrist. It's not gonna tire your arm. But you can sit there and work in a little, little, tiny, little area working on a dent, trying to get a dent out, or trying to put a dent in. If you're trying to put a, put a, a pattern on something, you can work from the backside and actually poke that metal out on the other side and do like Ray Pousse. You know, you can, you can make a face with it. You can make a figure with it, working from the backside of a piece of metal. So that's what this is for. Now this also came from the blacksmith school. And I have been told that it was for shaping horseshoes. But I use it like a flattening hammer. If I want to flatten out a, a bigger piece of metal, if I've got little ripples or something in it and I want to work all those out, because it's got a very flat face on both sides of the hammer. It's got nice weight to it. You can get some good power out of it. You can choke it up a little and still get a little bit of, you, know, you can get enough force out of it where you can sit there and, and pick at something this way, but it's a bigger area. The other thing I do with this is, I'll use this like a dolly and I'll go inside of something where I've got, a, I've got a dent, I've got a rise that I want to take out of a piece of metal. Well, I'll use this like a backer to go inside where it's touching the metal and then I'll take a smaller hammer and I can work that dent out here and actually push all that metal down, flatten all that out because I've got room for that metal to move, but this is gonna act like a, like a tiny little anvil basically inside of a piece of metal so I can flatten something out that way. Both of these are actually more for uh, blacksmithing as opposed to farrier work. You know, you're, you're not making horseshoes with them. This is more for pounding red hot metal on an anvil for making a shape. You know, for taking like a railroad spike and making a knife with it. You want this one to get started. Then you're gonna come back and work on it more with this one. Then you'll get one of these others to finish the job with, but lots of power. You don't have to swing it very hard. You don't have to come from, you know, from heaven on above to try to get anything done with it because the head weighs so much. So you can just get a nice little rhythm going and get a lot of work done with this. Flattening and stretching. If you come down on a piece of metal with this, this end, what's actually going to happen is you're gonna make that metal go that way. You're gonna make it go in two directions at once. If you come down this way with it, you're gonna make the metal go in 360 degrees at once. So you can take a big heavy piece of stock and go this way with it and actually stretch that metal right out. Roll it over, stretch it out some more, just by working it this way, where if you go this way, you're just making a big pancake. And then you've got these two guys. Now, these are both ball peen hammers, a ball and a peen. They're more for like mechanic work. I used this when I was a mechanic. You know, this is from, wow, 25 years ago. Um, 
but this was my mechanic hammer, you know, when I wanted to beat on a car, when I wanted to beat on a, you know, a part on an engine, if I wanted to, you know, you know, split a nut off with a chisel, something like I would use, I would use a hammer like this. This is a dead blow hammer. So when you actually strike something with this, it doesn't rebound. It's full of, it's got shot inside here, so it helps to absorb some of that impact so it doesn't bounce back up again. This one, you strike something, the hammer actually wants to bounce back up at you again. You know, different technologies. This hammer is probably close to 50 years old. You know, it's been around in my family that long. This is just newer technologies. And of course, there are certain little safety precautions. You know, always have glasses on, safety glasses, um, in case something chips. You know, if you happen to catch it at the corner of the head on the, ha on the hammer, you don't want to chip that surface off and have that metal go flying. Um, this is for banging on metal. It's not necessarily for banging on a nail. This one is for banging on a nail. The difference? So if you compare this surface to this surface, the front of, you know, the head of the, of the hammer itself, you'll see the machinist hammer is actually curved just a little bit. The carpenter's hammer is perfectly flat across the front. So when you're driving a nail, if you use the correct hammer, you use a carpenter's hammer, and you hit that nail square on the head, it's going to push it straight down. If you use a machinist hammer, and even if you do hit it square on the head, there's more of a chance of that hammer going a little bit sideways and bending the nail. So always try to use the right hammer for the right job. You know, it makes it that much easier, makes it that much quicker, and it's also that much safer. So I hope that answers your question. Don't forget to come out to my website, sign up for my newsletter, and if you can, pop over to Facebook. Search for Kevin Carone Artist. You'll find me. I'm right there. We'll see you next time.